The community law center was very important for me, Albi, because I was one of thousands and thousands of exiles and uh, ANC, PAC had been unbanned, uh, Mandela had been released, the exiles were beginning to come back and it was Dalla Omar who invited me to come to the University of the Western Cape to join the Community Law Centre. So I was one of the very first exiles to come back and it was a marvellous, marvellous occasion, a very joyous occasion. So it was my reconnection with South Africa in that sense was through Dalla Farida Omar uh, and through the Community Law Centre. It became the engine room, I would say, the engine room uh, of the intellectual foundations that were being laid for the uh, new constitution in South Africa. Uh, UWC, we had, we had uh, not only Dalla Omar, then Kad Asmal came afterwards, and Zolas Kuiya came, and, and Bridget Mabandla came, and, and um, Yvonne Mohoro came, and there were other people came there, working in different departments, different centres, but all coordinated through the CLC uh, at, at UWC, and together with the Centre for Development Studies uh, and the Constitutional Committee of the ANC, we organised a whole series of uh, seminars, workshops, on the electoral system, why do we have proportional representation in South Africa today? It didn't just come out of the minds of some negotiator. We had a workshop organized primarily by the Community Law Center, Center for Development Studies, Constitutional Committee of the ANC. Uh, we discussed the whole question of the regions. Should we have a constitutional court? A very vital instrument in South Africa today, it was the Community Law Center that was really pioneering the idea of having a constitutional court. And it so happened the main speakers at that workshop were Arthur Chaskelson uh, and, and Pius Lunga, who went on to become heads of those courts. Uh, and these were very, very open debates and discussions. They weren't designed to secure an advantage for the ANC or any political formation. This was for South Africa. He was um, a fun leader. Uh, because he never walked around like an important leader uh, and he didn't see himself as a kind of gatekeeper, a micromanager. Uh, his job was to maintain a vision, a direction, to recruit people, to encourage discussion uh, and he was hardworking himself, he was thoughtful, uh, but it was I think very very helpful that he ha had a very genial nature a warm personality, he loved ideas, he loved ideas. Maybe partly because he didn't, he wasn't born into the ANC. Um, he had a unity movement background that sharpened his brain quite strongly. He moved over to the ANC, uh, but it was a process of long theoretical, conceptual, practical uh, evolution development on his part. And I think that made him particularly open in ways that other people for whom the world was already clearly defined uh, might, might have had quite the openness that he had. It was very Cape Town, you know. Dalla was an intellectual, a thoughtful person. Uh, the, the, the tone, the accent, the mood, if you like, was, was what I would call Cape Town, people's Cape Town. And, and um, it, it was appropriate because we were trying to now develop something that would have a, a sense of warmth, of humanity, of respect for human dignity uh, in it. And when the person who is, in a sense, coordinating, uh, it's more than co coordinating, managing, guiding, he wasn't like the leader with a capital T and a capital L. Uh, he was at the centre of what was happening, at the centre of the centre, uh, and that radiant, uh, warm personality uh, created an atmosphere, and it wasn't just with, with the professors and, and the lawyers, it was with his staff, it was with the students, uh, and, and um, it was a very positive um, climate in which to function. The idea of the community standing together 
not only to overcome the force of the, of, of the repression, but to say, here we are. We are somebody. We matter. We count. All of us. And we do it together. Uh, th that was very, very strong. In, in that sense, the notion of the community uh, emerged from the uh, practice of struggle and the um, law center then was to give a significance to the role of law in advancing popular struggle and the rights of people and it meant the rights didn't just mean the rights of the wealthy, the privileged, the powerful, the property owners, uh, the, the moguls who dominated society but the rights of the disenfranchised, the marginalized, the poor uh, to me, all of these themes were, were somehow embraced indirectly, but, but very forcefully in the very concept of a community law center. I suppose a lot had to do with that particular moment. It was a moment in the life of our nation, of our continent, of the world in a way, and the center was at the center. Uh, the overlap between people at the center and the Constitutional Committee of the ANC was also very, very important. So it wasn't like the center being consultants and being given a brief and doing some research and coming up with a position paper and handing it over. Uh, we were the same people, but benefiting from the academic environment, from the ability to research, to debate, to organize conferences, to get different opinions, to develop reports. Uh, so there was almost an, an organic uh, relationship between the, the purely academic, not purely academic, the academic based and academic style and mode on the one hand and the engagement with the life of the nation on the, on, on the other hand. And so Dalla became the first Minister of Justice. It wasn't an, an accident that that happened. Um, Zorosquia became also a minister in, in the new cabinet. Uh, Kada Asmal a minister in, in the cabinet. Um, I went on to the constitutional court following a different trajectory in that way. But uh, we weren't consultants, we were participants. But participants using that, that edge, if you like, uh, that, that, that sharpness, uh, benefiting from the space uh, that you can get from an academic setting. And for me, it's a very remarkable example of engaged scholarship. Uh, where ideas matter and you follow them where they lead but they matter because they're feeding into the life of the nation in a very direct way and so that overlap between our academic work and our political work I think became uh, vital. The political work infused the academic work with a, a sense of immediacy and, and importance and significance and at the same time the academic work gave structure and coherence uh, and, and would draw in international experience that helped the political work very directly. But I think it, it should never lose the connection with some of the grand themes. Uh, it, it should always be a little bit ahead. Uh, it should always be challenging. Um, it, it should have quite a lot of dreaming in it. It's that mixture of dreaming, imagining, thinking, conceptualizing on the one hand, and then that hard, nuggety, uh, get your hands dirty, research on the ground on the other. If we can maintain those, those features, then I think it, it, its role is, is, is assured.